Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, welcome in. NFL playoff wild card weekend predictions, previews, whatever you want to call it. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And we have got four fantastic football games to discuss today. Uh, are you are you pumped about the playoffs? Yeah, man. So I, I know your Pats are playing opening weekend. It's the first time since, what, 2009? It's right? been a while. It's, it's been, been a while. Good. It's good. It's, it, it's kind of, it gets you in the mood early, right? Like it's, it's meaningful football for you uh, right off the bat. I'd rather really see Kansas City in this game, but it's all right. <laughs> I can understand that. I can understand it. All right, let's go on and get uh, get all the stuff out of the way. First off, you can find us at winningcureseverything.com. Uh, all of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms, etc. will all be right there. Very simple to find. Uh, winningcureseverything.com is the website. You can also go over to smackapparel.com, use promo code WIN, that's W-I-N, and you will get 20% off of your order, regardless of how big it is. Uh, and if your order is over $40, they're going to ship it to you for free. It's a pretty awesome deal. Very good stuff they got going on there. Smackapparel.com is the website. They got all your college and pro team uh, needs, gear, etc., shirts, whatever. Good stuff over there. Go check them out. Smackapparel.com, promo code WIN. And the show is also brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. They've also got a bunch of cool concerts, stand up comedy coming through, all sorts of shows, all sorts of steakhouses, great golf courses, etc. There's a lot of fun stuff to do down there. Go check it out. Tunicatravel.com is the website. Check them out. Tell them Winning Cures Everything sent you, and, uh, and they will appreciate that. Let's go ahead and fire in to round one. We have got the Bills and the Titans. No, the Bills nope. and the Texans. I, I wrote it down wrong. Excuse me. That's a, mentally, I should know this. <laughs> like, I've been prepping for these stupid games. I should know what's going on here. The line is Texans minus two and a half. It is at 3.35 p.m. Central Time on ESPN. It is the first wild card game, and all the people that were out last week for the Texans, it looks like are going to be back. J.J. Oh, yeah. Watt, it looks like it's going to be back. Will Fuller is going to be back. I, this is – look, this ain't the same team that got destroyed by the Titans last week. We'll just say that. This is a different Texans team. This is the one that, that beat up on the Titans in Nashville three weeks ago. So, however, this Bills team, I think, might be better than this Texans team. Uh, tell me, tell me how you feel about this going going forward. I know that we both don't like Bill O'Brien. We got that down. Yeah. But is there any reason to think that the Bills can go in and and whip up on the Texans in this game? I mean, I think they can hang with them. I think they can beat them. I don't know that it's going to happen, but um, I I like Buffalo here. I like Sean McDermott a lot. I think that their defense is far superior than Houston's defense, even with J.J. Watt coming back. Um, I just think they're they're just going to be a a better, tougher defensive team. I think they can run the ball. They can control the line of scrimmage. And uh, and I think they can control the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Now, you're going to have to defend with – Watkins and 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 Hopkins and Fuller and that's going to be difficult but I think they've got the guys to do it and I like the Bills here I don't know how much I love it all of these I think the lines are exactly right on all these games I think it's so close um, the the margin of separation between all of these teams uh, is is pretty tight and. Uh, and yeah, I just I, I'm I'm gonna continue to ride the Bills. I've rode them all year, and it hasn't hurt me yet. No, and to be fair, uh, the Bills currently nine five and two against the spread this season. The Texans are seven and nine. Uh, both of these teams ten and six straight up. Um, I mean, I, one way to look, and I, I guess we're not gonna we're not gonna worry about over unders on these because goodness, we have been awful in bowl season on this. Uh, but one way to look at it, uh, Texas or the Texans are seven and nine uh, as far as the total goes. Seven overs, nine unders. Buffalo, four overs and twelve unders so far this season, which makes perfect sense. Uh, 
Buffalo, 19.6 points per game. They give up 16.2. The Texans average 23.6. They give up 24.1 points per game. Uh, yards per play says the same story. Uh, opponents yards per play for Buffalo, they only give up 5.1. And the Texans give up 6.3. I mean, it is, it's pretty crazy uh, when, when you look at it. Time of possession is about equal, all that kind of stuff. I... I like Buffalo, but I, I think they're very limited on offense with what they can do. It just depends on whether or not Josh Allen has a good game, right? And I think that Deshaun Watson, if you're looking at just pure talent, uh, how they've performed over the year, uh, really over multiple years at this point, uh, Deshaun Watson's a better quarterback. Oh, no, no, but, no it's down, Matt. Nobody questioned that at all. Um uh, The prediction tracker, the average prediction on this from all of the different analytic sites uh average is 1.56 so you know houston favored by one one and a half points i i tend to agree with that um i'm getting houston at less than a field goal and i've got wolf fuller healthy i've got you know all those receivers i've got deshaun watson uh, everybody had a, a bye week basically last week because they all sat i think i'm gonna ride with the texans here i don't like it but they are at home. They've got the the taste of last season's playoff game in their mouth. Um, I mean, they looked awful against the Colts last year, and I think that Colts team is better than this Bills team. Now, yeah, but that you can't even look at that because this Houston's team is not even close to what that Texans team was last year. I, I agree. I agree. Um, but I am going to side. That doesn't matter. I am going to side Texans here. Uh, but you're uh, you're riding Buffalo, huh? I'm riding Buffalo, man. I've been on them all year. I was on them early, and uh, and and I'm not stopping. I can uh, I can totally totally see that. Would it surprise me if the Bills come out and get this win? Not in the slightest. No. And if they the lose, it wouldn't shock me either. I mean, there's no outcome. A blowout either way would be surprising. Yeah. No, I I agree with you on that. I I think that this Bills defense will keep this uh, yeah. right right just low scoring. You know, I think I think this game goes under, but. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm rolling Texans here. I I think that they're just the better team, especially with Will Fuller and uh, and Hopkins and all that. So, uh, let's move on to the next game, and this one is the Titans at the Patriots. And you are going to have uh, a lot more to say about this one, I think, than I am. The Patriots are a five point favorite at home. It is fluctuated between five and a half and four and a half, uh, pretty much all week so far. Uh, it is seven fifteen p.m. on CBS. Primetime spot, CBS, you know, got a good one here. For the Titans, I don't know if this was the uh, desired matchup. I, you know, it was. everybody assumed that it was going to be the Chiefs, and then you have the Dolphins go in and win in Gillette last week. You're going to get a mad, irate Patriots team. But I just don't know if the Patriots are good enough to, to use that that angst, I guess you could say, that that fire. Uh, That's what I was about to say. I mean, you can be as mad as you want. If you can't find a way to score, you can't score. And if you can't stop the Dolphins' offense on one drive to 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 lock up, you know, a bye week in the playoffs, then I don't I don't know what to do. I can't help you. Now, to be fair, points uh, points four. Uh, New England is averaging twenty six point three on the season, but. A lot of that came early. Like that, this offense was working early in the season. Like, what what do you feel happened to this team to where they they just? What What do you mean? What happened? They had Antonio Brown for two games, and they had and had a uh, uh, Josh Gordon for a couple of games. Yeah, but neither like it, that was early in the season, and they continued. And that's to when play they scored well. forty a game, Gary. Yeah, and so but, when you only play sixteen games, and you've got four or five games where you get to put up forty points, that throws the average off pretty massive. Agreed. I'm I'm with you, but I'm I'm also let's see. All right, they beat Miami. That, 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 sorry, they lost to Miami 27-24. They beat Buffalo 24-17. They put up 34 against Cincy. They only put up 16 against Kansas City. Like there were there were spots. They put, you know, 40 up on uh on Miami early in the season. They put 30 up on the Jets. Then they put up 16 on the Bills. They put up 33 on Washington. I guess they were able to score on bad teams. How's that? Does that make sense? Okay. 
how about this? Are the Titans a bad team? Like, well, no, the Titans aren't a bad team. So, that's not, no, nothing you've asked has made any sense yet so far. You're not telling the story at all. You're just throwing out stuff. Help me what do you out wanna, here. What do you want to talk about? I don't know what. Where to do you want to go? I don't know what to make of this game. I have no okay. idea. Like I'm, I'm so confused. Well, well because the, the the mass public has has written the Patriots off completely, and everyone says this is the matchup that's going to kill them. It, it, and I wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise me if the Pats lose this game. Okay. They don't have anybody on defense that can stop Henry. And this vaunted defensive secondary, I think, has – I think they – see, I don't think – everyone says that, oh, they were overrated early. I don't think they were overrated early, no. all right? Because that that Steelers team that they shut down was completely healthy at the beginning of the year. Yeah. And they had all those weapons that were crazy good. They weren't the Steelers that finished the year with Duck Hodges and James Washington and nobody else. All right. James Conner. They were fully loaded and they shut them down. I think they, they have fought this entire season. And I think at the end of the year, they're beat and they don't have a whole lot left. That's why teams like the dolphins can break open big pass plays on them and run on them. Brown's going to be almost impossible to guard, and and uh, uh, Henry's going to be impossible to stop. So matchup wise, it seems like it's pretty easy to just say the rain is over and the Titans are going to win this thing. That's where all of the action is going, and that's where the entire public is believing. I'm not there yet, but I'm also a believer, and that's fine. And 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 I'm going to continue to think that they can figure it out one more time that's that I think that's where I stand on this it seems too easy to to look at this three-headed monster that the Titans have with you know Tannehill AJ Brown and Derrick Henry and say okay well yeah they've got a good rushing attack and they've actually got a, a, a aerial attack now and Mike Vrabel knows the Patriots as well as anybody so yeah of course the Titans will go in here and win and I think that's just too simple like, I, the Pats have done this. Well, I would tell you, Vegas year. is going to need the Patriots, and that's rare, rarely the case, but Vegas is absolutely going to need the Patriots. Uh, offshore, it is 53% of the tickets on the Titans. Um, so it's not crazy yet, um, but I am going to pull up Vegas Insider right quick. We're, we're, a little, we're a little bit away from game time, too. You and I always do these things so early, we don't get a true act- accurate yeah. thing when we're trying to predict this. You you just you just know Gary everybody everybody you look, there's not a single person on TV that is saying the Pats can win this game they're just not yeah the yeah. damn sure not saying the Pats can cover no you're you're right you're right about that so um, Vegas Insider we always get the sharp money when we when we're looking at Vegas Insider right now first it's always going to be sharp money and it is da, 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 da. let's see spread is sixty percent on sixty percent Patriots yeah so that's 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 a small amount of the people that are actually making the bets. Yeah, I, that, I assure you that by game time, this thing's going to be all in favor of the Titans. Yeah, we're we're recording by the way on January first after the uh, like the Rose Bowl is on right now. So after yeah. the Citrus Bowl and the Outback Bowl and whatnot. So that's uh that's what time it is. Happy New Year, everybody. We hope that you guys are doing well. This is the beginning of a new decade, a new year. Uh, hopefully, uh, things are going well. Hopefully. <laughs> So let's uh, let's talk about the Titans and the Pats. Let's let's talk about um, what we think our our picks are going to be. I I think I'm siding Patriots here. I'm going to go Pats minus five uh, because I think they'll find a way to to turn over Tannehill, make him uncomfortable. Like the thing about the Titans, the wins that they have gotten down the stretch have not been like great. Yeah, I know that they've won a lot with with Tannehill in there now. But the win at the Texans last week, that's against a bunch of backups. They lost at home to the Saints. They lost at home to the Texans when they were healthy. They beat Oakland. They beat Indianapolis, who, you know, at that point had almost... It's a complete split. shell of themselves. Yeah, they beat Jackson. They got, they got one great win, and that's against the Chiefs. Yeah, and even that was a little bit fluky. Um, yep. Because there, there were just some plays in that game where it, it just could have gone either way. But along with that, I mean, you... You lose at Carolina before that. You beat Tampa Bay at the last second. You beat the Chargers at the last second. Like, there's nothing on here that says 
that they are capable of beating a team a good of team the, of the caliber of New England. Yeah. And this is still a team that won 13 games this year. Yeah, and it's it's the master against the apprentice basically. It's Belichick against, you know, Mike Vrabel. Like it's just it it's different. I, I don't think that Vrabel uh, is 12 in games. Uh, I I'm sorry. Yeah, I 12 and 4. The, yeah. Chalked up the Dolphins a little early. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I I'm I'm going Patriots here. I'm going Patriots minus 5. Uh I I think, you know, I think they're going to shut down this Titans offense. And, I mean, you know as well as I do. You've said it every every week, every year, for four years. Belichick takes away at least one thing that you do really well. well. Yep. And so it's either going to be A.J. Brown or it's going to be Derrick Henry. That's right. One of those two guys you can, you can cross off the list. So at that point, if you've only got one of those weapons, are they – Like, they're still both kind of young guys. How good is this offense? Right. And the Patriots, I mean, they still, against the Bills, who's a good defense, they still found a way to put up 24 points. Yeah. So, they they, in big-time spots, like a a Saturday or, yeah, I guess it was Saturday night, primetime game uh, against the Bills, against a divisional opponent, they put up 24 points and they got a win by seven and, and covered at home. Here they are at home in a playoff game, you know, by by less than five or by, uh, excuse me, less than a touchdown. Yep. Like, give me that all day. I'll take the Pats. I'm, I'm assuming you're running with the Pats as well. Yes. Yes. All right. That sounds sounds good to me. That moves us into Sunday's action, and let's go ahead and start with the early game. This one's on Fox. It's Vikings at Saints. The Saints are an eight point favorite. And it's 12.05 p.m. I am, I, I was a little shocked that this line is eight. It, am I crazy for thinking that that's way too many points here? Uh, I mean, you can think that. That's fine. Well, so the, uh, the prediction tracker analytics say that it should be 5.16. The so, Vikings have looked putrid lately. Yeah, the last two games... Definitely. I, I don't think that they had well, anything really to play for. They had nothing to play for week 17, yeah. but in week 16 they did, and they played a team that I think is far inferior to the Saints. And, and had them at home. Yeah, and that was a the game they had to win. They had to win that game. So, at this point, I'm, I'm guessing it like the, just recency bias uh, – the Saints should easily cover this, right? I I like the Saints here. I think they are the most complete team in the playoffs. I think they're the, they're the most complete team in football right now. From top to bottom, they don't have a weakness. There's nothing they do bad, and they do something at every level really good to exceptional. Is is it a little absurd that they went 13-3 and three and have to play in the wild card weekend? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm shocked. I, all year long, Green Bay, you know, baffled us on how they're continuing to win games when they just didn't look great. Yeah, anytime they just looked like it was smoke and mirrors and all. But they, but they ended up winning. They got the tiebreaker over the Saints, so they get to the, the you know the, the bye week. But I think the Saints team's the best team in football in the NFC. Yeah, I think I think you're probably right. Like I understand they got beat at home by the 49ers, but I think just looking at the team overall, uh, I think the Saints are the best team in football. Um, I, I do wonder, I don't think there's a look ahead in the playoffs, so maybe not. I, I just I feel like the Vikings are going to show up for this game. Like Sure I, they are. I, sure I, they are. It's a playoff game. What do you mean? Are they going to show up? No, I mean like because the last two weeks, like two weeks ago, was a playoff game for them, basically against the Packers. I, I and- think they showed up, and I think they got beat. I don't think Kirk Cousins is good enough to do this. I mean, this is a this is a prime spot. I don't know. I man. just I don't, don't. I don't think he's good enough to do it. That's just it. You. you I just might don't. Do that. And I also remember. The, the the miracle in Minnesota and and I don't think the Saints are just gonna let anything like that happen. I think they're gonna kick their ass. 
Now, I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. But this is the one game out of all three of these I don't think is going to be close. I think the other three are going to be one-score games that are going to be close. They could go any way at the, at the end of the game. This game, I don't see it. I see two touchdowns, and I think they're going to run away. Let's see. They lost twice to the Packers. They lost at the Bears. They lost at Kansas City. And I don't see a win over – like, they lost at Seattle. I don't see a a win over a good, a good team. team. Yeah, I just – maybe maybe you're right. So, and on, on top of that, uh, they're saying, let's see, Dalvin Cook is probable against uh, against New Orleans. Like, without him, this team is, is – They got no chance. Yeah, they are, they are just done. Um, yeah, I'm – I'm going to lay the points. I'm laying the eight, and I'm not afraid of that at all. That's the only one out of all these that I feel great about. And to be fair, I mean, New Orleans is 11-5 and five against the spread this year, 13-3 and three straight up. Uh, Minnesota, 10-6 and six straight up, 8-8 eight and eight against the spread. Uh, if you go and look, I mean, Minnesota has had the better defense uh, as far as yards per play and points per game against. So the Vikings have had the better defense. Yeah, and they've they've had more uh, more turnovers. They've had all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, the Vikings defense has been better, but I I think in this situation, I mean, I I do think that the the Saints are going to be amped up for this one. Yeah, you're you're probably right. I'm going to side. I'm they gonna, got I'm, to I'm play. They got to play the Bears twice. That helps those defensive stats. Yeah, the Saints. True. The Saints only got to play them once, and they got to play the Lions twice as well. Oh yeah, see there. Yeah, that, that I mean, you just got to look at who these teams play. As bad as Tampa Bay is, they're going to hurt your defensive numbers because they're going to put up yards. They're going to put up points. Yeah, and the Saints had to play twice. Yeah. So, so Falcons offensively are pretty that's, good. That's true. You, that's true. I mean, it's, you can't just you just can't look at those things because they don't play equal schedules at all. Yeah. No, you're you're right. You're right. Okay. Um. The like I said, the analytics. Uh, that crowd says it should be Saints minus five point. Yeah, they, 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 they think this is three points different. Yeah. So, but I I, I think if Vegas is leaning this way, I, I kind of like Vegas' side. Uh, let's see, we've got, whew, all right, so offshore, 54% of the tickets are on uh, the Saints. And at Vegas, we've got 64% of the tickets on New Orleans, on the Saints. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a ride with that. I like it. So uh, we're both uh, we're both rolling Saints here, right? I am. All right. Sounds uh, you talked me into it. Nicely done. Nicely done. <laughs> All right. Let's move to Sunday afternoon. This is the last of the um, this is the last of the playoff games of the wild card weekend. This is the Seahawks minus two and a half at the Eagles. It's three forty p.m. on NBC. And I mean, let's let's start off with where the money is. 66% of the offshore tickets are on Seattle. It opened as a pick 'em and it is now two and a half. Uh, you can find it one and a half, some spots, two in some spots, uh, two and a half in several other ones, some of the bigger ones. Uh, in Vegas, it is 84% of the tickets on Seattle. I mean, that's a that's absurd. That's a, <laughs> that's that is insane. And it makes you think, uh, maybe maybe this is not right. You know, I love the Eagles here. I love. I haven't. I, you know how much I have crapped on them all year, and I have hated on this team. Yeah. I love, love, love Philadelphia in this spot right here. Philly is uh, is ex- what, well, according to the analytics bunch, Philly should be a one point seven eight point favorite. So Seattle hasn't played a normal game all year. Every game they have played has come down to the very last play, the very last minute, and it's always been some weird crap that's happened to get us to the situation we're in and to finish the game. Week 17 was no different. We finished the game, and home field advantage and the division winner in the NFC West came down to inches, literal inches, of where a guy was when his elbow hit the ground, his forearm hit the ground. And and I, this is going to be no different. And you're telling me I get to start off at home. I get the home team catching points. Yeah. And I think it's going to be crazy anyway. I don't know what the Seattle team is going to look like. I know this. Everybody's excited about Marshawn. Marshawn hasn't played football in like two years. What are yeah. we doing? 
Yeah, uh, you're you're right. Uh, I mean, is he just going to come off the, the the street and just take the rock and run? He he didn't. I mean, he he played last week. He wasn't anything to write home about, but he did at least no. give him some threat. Um, I will say this. I mean, Seattle went to the Eagles uh, on November 24th and won by eight. Uh, however, they did lose three of their last four, and they played at the Panthers on December 15th and only won by six. Yep. So, you know, they, they got beat 28-12 to 12 by the Rams. They got beat 27-13 to 13 by Arizona. That one was at home. And then they lost 26-21 to San Francisco in the last game of the year. Um, they They didn't look good late. I'll say so, that. so the Eagles, here's one of the reasons I like the Eagles. Okay, let me tell you why. Okay. I think offensively they have figured this thing out. Okay. They've got so many guys hurt and they've got so many guys injured. Their their wide receivers are a shell of themselves. But at some point in time, they went and found tape from New England back in the day when they didn't have any wide receivers, but they got two really good tight ends. And amazing. Hey, let's run the football and then let's use our tight ends to open up the middle of the 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 whole uh the the, the defense. So the middle of the field's wide open all day long. So, so you can throw underneath passes constantly to Ertz and Goddard, who are unbelievable tight ends, by the way. And then and then that opens it up, and Miles Sanders has become an absolute man. And this defense for the for the Eagles, they're getting better every week. They're getting healthier every week. And I just think they're ready to roll. I don't think this team is going to make a run like the team of the, you know, of, of the Super Bowl year, but I think they can beat Seattle. I yeah. absolutely think that. I think the worst thing that could have happened to Philadelphia was Seattle winning against the 49ers. Yeah, I, I think you're I think you're probably right. Because I think if the 49ers are coming in here, we're looking at a a five to six point home dog line. And and, and I think I think Seattle or uh, San Francisco yeah. probably covers it. Oh, I would cut and I would bet San Francisco all day. Yeah. I'd be betting them all day. I think this Eagles team is different, and I also think I think the Seahawks are so much smoke and mirrors right now. Well, I think so with the Seahawks, like they they continue to try and run the ball too much. Like it, it's it, I, we thought because they've got so many backs injured and whatnot that okay, well now you've got a perfect reason to go out and let Russell be Russell, right? And and they continue. I think the only time their offense looks good or they make any offensive plays is when Russell just the play breaks down and he's just yes improvising. That's it. But that's not a sustainable offense against against a good defense. Uh, agreed. You, you just can't do that. No, I, I not agree the playoffs. With you. you damn sure can. But but if you say you go in and rather than focus on the run as much as they do because they they are still like a sixty to forty. Run so you think they're going to change what they've done all season? No, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying oh. they will continue to do what they've done yeah. all season, which has has cost them. That's right. Um, because they, I mean, other than the games that they lose, like the games that they win, are all close, close games. Oh, the games that every they, game they lose is close too. By the they're, way, they're not, they're, not all, lately. they're all field goal games. That's, well, okay. So the last, uh, let's see, Seattle. All right, so they lost by five against San Francisco, but before that, they got beat twenty-seven to thirteen by Arizona. Oh they, yeah, yeah, that game was an ass kicking. But that game, we found out early on that game did not matter before it even kicked off. Right, and then of course they go to Carolina the week before that. They win by six against a horrific Carolina yes. Panthers team. I'm just a bad, bad yeah. Carolina Panthers team. And then the week before that, they lost at the Rams twenty-eight to twelve. Like they got smoked in that game. Uh, against the True. Vikings, they win thirty-seven to thirty. At Philadelphia, they win seventeen to nine. At San Francisco, twenty-seven twenty-four. Against Tampa Bay, forty thirty. Everything's one possession. Yep. So, but when they lose, like they lost to Baltimore, thirty to sixteen. Yeah, that so, was an ass kicking. Uh, they beat the Rams early in the season, thirty to twenty-nine, and probably should have lost that game. That's so, right. That's right. That's the game where the Rams kicker missed a pretty easy f- uh, extra point or field goal. It was a. It was a field goal. It was okay. a field goal at the a very last play of the game that just went wide right. So, yeah, yeah. It, I, I think the way that Seattle is going, and they, I mean, a lot of these wild card matchups where they go in as the wild card, uh, they, they haven't done great in these spots. True. Uh, I'm, I think I'm rolling with you with the Eagles. Like I, I yeah. think the Eagles should be favored here. They've won I four straight. They're playing with confidence. I think you're right. I think they got it figured out. Like, yeah, you, you don't need wide receivers. So some, 
some guy on Twitter that's that's some writer or whatever that likes to talk numbers talked about how for the first time ever a quarterback threw for 4,000 yards this year in Carson Wentz yep. but didn't have a receiver over 500 yards. I was like, wait a minute. That was well, that's N- not how math works. That was an that NBC doesn't, stat. That doesn't, that doesn't have – oh, oh, oh. He's specifically taking the position of wide receiver in – Everyone else that catches the ball doesn't matter. I was like, well, I bet Tom Brady's had plenty of those because we've had plenty of years where nobody catches the ball but Gronk and seven running backs. Yeah. Well, but uh, you're, you're going to have, you know, Edelman will get 500. Yeah. He, okay, know. he'll have one guy that, that'll yeah. get it sometime to help boost it up a little bit. But just to act like they don't have anybody to throw to, our Ertz and Goddard might be two of the best receivers on the field when – both teams are out there. You know, Lockett is a stud, and DK's coming into his his, his own and, and proving that he belongs in the league and was way underdrafted. But Ertz and Goddard are almost impossible to guard I because they have size and speed. Uh, to be fair, I mean, Aguilar is, uh, is questionable um, for Sunday. so it, He's also been worthless this year. Yeah, but I mean, so, he, he has been injured almost all year. What uh, What's the guy's name, Greg Hill? Is that him? That's uh, Greg Hill Jr. I think it's Hill. Maybe I'm crazy, but it, he has been a, a welcome addition. Uh, he played quarterback at Houston, um, but he is. Let's see. I think it's yeah, Greg Hill. Let's well, see. I know the running back that they've been they've been touting. Let's see. Oh, that's the wrong one. I don't know what his name is. It's Greg something. Greg Ward. Greg Ward. That's okay. It. Yeah, he has been a welcome addition. He is. He's kind of a do it all guy. Um, he's been great for the Eagles. So well, I, I, they they brought him in off the woodpile, basically. Um, I believe in Miles Sanders, and and I, I think that guy's going to be a stud for years to come. By the way, uh, you you might be right on that. Um, Greg Ward Jr. Let's see, in the last however many games, he's five eleven, one hundred ninety pounds. But uh, but yeah, let's see against uh, da, 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 da. let's see. All right, 28 receptions on 40 targets for 254 yards, averaging 9.1 yards per catch. Uh, he The last couple of games, he has done pretty dang well. Um, against the Giants, he had six receptions for 43 yards. Against Dallas, he had four receptions for 71 yards. Against Washington, seven receptions for 61 yards. He has been uh, – he's kind of been a go-to guy. Yeah, and they, they've got another running back that came out of nowhere. Both of these guys just completely off the scrap heap. Boston Scott, who everybody in Philadelphia has fallen in love with, gotten 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 on fire about or whatever. And just no these nobody knows where these guys have come from. But but they found a way to to make them do something. You know, <laughs> it's been uh it it's been interesting. It's been very interesting for them. So yeah, I'm I'm rolling Eagles here. Um, plus the two and a half. I think they're going to win the game outright. And it, I, I think coaching match like these are all interesting coaching matchups. But, you know, you got uh, you got Pete Carroll against Doug Peterson. Like, I love this coaching matchup. I think this is going to be great. Like, this will be a fun game to have. Uh, we were talking, I think, before we started recording about whether or not NBC got to pick this game. Yeah. And I think I, they did. I think they probably did. I think this is the best... This is the best game of the uh, of the weekend. Are these the last two coaches to win a Super Bowl not named Bill Belichick? I think so. Yeah, I think you're right. Doug I'm Peterson to, and I know the Pats won three of the last five. No I'm other no other AFC team has won it. Nope. Um, so it had, I think I think this is so. This is the matchup of the the last two Super Bowl winners from the Bill. NFC and not the Patriots. That's uh, that's interesting. That's <laughs> interesting. So, yep. Yeah. All right. So, here's our rundown. We got, uh, let's see, I've got the Texans. You've got the Bills. Only one we're going head to head on. So, yeah. let's hope we do good this week. And at least we'll, one of us will we'll maybe win them all. Yeah. You've, you've got two underdogs and two favorites. I've got three favorites and one underdog. I, uh, I'm i looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a good, uh, it's going to be a good weekend. Good weekend. All right. Is there anything else we need to hit? That's it, brother. All right. Winning Cures Everything, of course. Go check out winningcureseverything.com. Go check out smackapparel.com. Use promo code WIN for 20% off. That's W-I-N. And uh, in any order over 40 bucks is going to be free shipping. And tunicatravel.com. They are the South's 
premier sports gambling destination. Go check them out for yourself. And that is going to wrap it up for this week. We will be back. Uh, we're going to try and change up the schedule maybe a little bit next week. But uh, but we'll let you guys know what we end up doing. We're looking forward to a, a good 2020, man. Let's uh, Let's get started off with some winners. I can't wait. We will talk to you all again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.